Hi, this is Mike from Microsoft Microsoft Reviews and How To, and on today's video, we'll be taking a look at this graphics card and potentially replacing the fans on them. Uh, this is a used bargain which I picked up, paid a pretty decent price for this. Unfortunately, it does seem to have some issues. This fan, pretty much silent. This one, you can hopefully pick up on that. The bearing seems to have gone. I have tried to uh, put a drop of oil in there to try and lubricate it, see if it's just dried out. Unfortunately, that doesn't appear to be the case. And being that I did get this for a pretty decent price, I thought rather than actually return it and try and take a chance with another graphics card, I figured AliExpress should come to the rescue. So I went onto AliExpress, looked up some replacement fans for this. Actually quite inexpensive. Got a pair. You can actually buy them singly because they do come in different versions. So on the dual range of cards from Asus, uh, these fit pretty much most models. So the 6600, 6700, 6800, etc., etc and some of the NVIDIA ones as well. They all use the same fans pretty much, but there's two. So you have one which has basically just one cable coming off it, which is, I believe, the rear of the two. And then you get the other one which has the main part which actually plugs into the GPU itself. So it's like a six or eight pin connector on there. So that plugs into the graphics card. Then the other fan plugs into this one to give you the dual control, etc. So anyway, yeah, very cost effective. These came in, I think it was somewhere around about £10 for the pair. You can pick them up individually for about £7 or £8 each, but I thought, well, if I'm taking it apart, might as well do both. Although, you will probably find, if you are replacing these, just doing the rear one or the single cable one is the easier of the two. It doesn't require any real hard work. This one, a little bit more fiddly to get to because of where the connector is, actually on the GPU is a little bit hidden. And also there is a, a few little blobs of hot glue and some tape and what have you that will need removing to replace them. But hopefully these are going to be okay. They seem to be okay. I'll give them the quick spin just to make sure the bearings are absolutely okay. And they don't seem to be quite as nice a quality as the originals, but we'll see what they're like. But certainly, as this one was, really wasn't cutting it for me a little bit too noisy. So today's video, we go through, do a quick teardown of this, show you where it all goes, put it back together. Uh, potentially might do some noise tests. Not too sure, I don't think it really needs it, but this was, the grinding was absolutely awful. So let's uh, see how easy this is to take apart. Realistically, it's actually quite simple with these. All you do is look for the support pillars. So you've got plastic support pillars in various areas, and you just undo the screws for those, for the plastic supports. And then on the back where you've got, where your monitor plugs in, there's two screws at the top there, which also attach into the top. And then pretty much that is it, other than disconnecting the cable, and then you should be able to get good access. So let's move the camera around, get you some better angles, and we'll take this thing apart. So here we have our graphics card. We're now on the uh, a magnetic project mat. So let's start with the screws on the bottom. So for this, you'll need a PH1 screwdriver, uh, such as this. If you haven't already, I would suggest magnetizing it. You can buy magnetizing tools. Uh, we were sent one by William Bodie. I've now worked out how to use it, so thank you very much for that. It's very useful, actually, especially on some screwdrivers where they get a little bit older and they lose their magnetism. So we go through, we're going to undo the, I think it's five screws. You can tell they've got a little bit of a, a deeper recess than some of the other ones. This card itself actually is completely unmolested. So the security tag or security kind of fixing is actually still in place. So it hasn't been... Uh, tampered with in any way unless that has been put on after the fact which can happen sometimes so we've done one two three i've just got these last two to do on this outside edge and there we go so that is the main screws done on the back so now we have to move around to this top section and we're just going to take out this screw and that screw there and you're not going to be able to see this very well because the camera isn't a little bit too tight for that, unfortunately. So with those all loosened off, now we can just lift this top off and move it to the side. As you can see, there's a, a pretty grubby fans on there. And what we can do to make life a little bit easier if we want to detach it, there is actually a connection just down in here, which uh, is a little bit hidden by the heat sink there. And it's just a latch. So let's push the latch down and we can wiggle the cable out. And there we go. So we can put the graphics card to one side because we don't need that for now. And let's concentrate actually on this framework. So like I said, this is the kind of the, the rear fan. This one technically is the sort of front one or the main fan. So this one has the main wiring loom going to it. 
There's a little blob of hot glue there. You also got some tape holding down the wires. The fans themselves are just secured by these four screws. So let's go ahead and get those loosened off. These are also PH1 or Phillips head one screws. So there's our four screws removed. Uh, so now technically what you could do if you only want to replace this rear fan, which is all I actually really need to do, just lift that fan up and then you can remove this bit of tape, which is holding the wire in place and it just sits into here. So if you wanted to, you could just disconnect this fan, a little bit stiff, and we'll take it to one side. So we'll replace that. So make sure you get the one which has just got the single cables on there. Plonk it down into position. And then you could just rewire that, put it around and connect up your cable again. And you're pretty much done. So I'm gonna put the screws in while we're thinking about it. So there we go, that is the one fan done. Again, if we want to, we can just cable tie that in there or stick that in there. And that is uh, pretty much good to go. I'm actually gonna replace the front one as well. I think it's probably worth doing while we're in this position. And also it is a little bit dirtier and there's a different logo on the top. So I'm gonna get rid of this. Now, for those of you that are wondering how to get rid of the uh, hot glue without a hot glue gun, which is on there, you can actually use a little bit of isopropyl alcohol. That does seem to uh, sort of dissolve the glue a little bit, at least the contact areas. That will enable you to remove the fan. So again, we do the same thing. Just lift that up and pull that out of there. Ah, it did actually just break off anyway, so the hot glue was basically useless anyway. So that is the, the secondary fan. You see that is the one, oh, sorry, the primary fan. So that has the main cable and also the pass through for the rear one. So just remembering which way it went in. And this one, I think it's actually got a little bit less cable on it because that joins up in there. So I don't think that's gonna go quite the way, all the way back in there, but we'll see. Let's get the screws back into the fan. Also as well, make sure that your fans have the foam pads on, installed on there because those will help because you do get vibrations from the actual heat sink if you allow it to just be plastic against the metal, it does tend to rattle a little bit, especially if the fans aren't particularly well balanced. So those are all in, so now we can connect up the fans again. So you'll notice there's some little lugs there. So that just goes in that way round. And then you can tuck that into here, if it will fit, I don't think it will. I think those cables are a little bit shorter than the other version. So I'm just going to tuck those down in there and then hopefully we can get this connector to uh, attach back up to the graphics card. But that is effectively it. That is pretty much it. And just make sure that the fans spin. And that logo is not on particularly well, but that appears to be it. So let's get this reassembled and reassembly is essentially just the reverse of what we did to take it apart. So we'll start off with the two screws in the back, possibly then the five on the top. And that is pretty much it. So there we go, there are the fans put back in the graphics card. So this is gonna be pretty much ready to go back into the uh, system now and hopefully get that all tested and see how this card fares. Unfortunately, it does seem that one of the fans wasn't quite right. So I'm gonna have to do some other work on this. So I'm get it back up and running, but we'll, uh, we'll see what happens there. But I think that is gonna pretty much wrap this one up. If you've needed to take your dual card apart, Asus dual card apart, hopefully now you have the uh, information to do, allow you to do so. And you can check out things like the fans, how many pins the connectors need, all that kind of good stuff. And then you can order a replacement set should you need them. So hopefully this video has been useful to you. If it has, smash that like button. If you want to see more videos like this on a daily basis, maybe consider hitting subscribe and the chime notification. That way you'll be notified of future video releases. But for now, I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To. And hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.